Welcome to another episode of The Brand Called You, a podcast and podcast show that brings you leadership lessons, knowledge, experience, and wisdom from thousands of successful individuals from around the world. I'm your host, Ashutosh Garg, and today I have with me a senior professional from India, Mr. Rajiv Maheshwari. Rajiv, welcome to the show. Thank you, Ashutosh. Um, Rajiv is the co-founder of uh, an organization titled or called From the Expert's Mouth. He's a business and startup advisor, educator, thought leader, and enabler. So uh, Rajiv, uh, tell me a little bit about your journey as a professional manager and what made you start off on your own? Sure. Uh, firstly, Ashutosh, thanks for inviting me. And it's a pleasure and honor to be on the show called The Brand Called You. Uh, regarding my journey, I started off uh, being a chartered accountant, then went on to do an MBA, uh, followed the rat race kind of path uh, for several years. Uh, you know, took pride in getting uh, N number of promotions in N plus two kind of years, that kind of stuff. And uh, life carried on uh, until a point in time, uh, particularly during the pandemic, where, uh, you know, life gave us an opportunity uh, to reflect mm -hmm. on where we are going, what path we are taking. And that set us, uh, and, you know, particularly it set me thinking mm -hmm. about, you know, how I want to lay the chart of uh, the, the next 10, 15, 20 years mm -hmm. of my professional life and personal life as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's when I did a lot of deep thinking, discussed with my family and said, you know, there are a few things that we want to set right in our lives. Mm -hmm. uh, the first thing that came to mind is, you know, what is it that really gives us joy? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, apart from all the professional achievements, which give us a sense of pride, Mm. Uh, there is a difference between pride and joy, mm. right? So, you know, when we searched within, what I found was that joy typically comes from helping others, from being of assistance to others, mm -hmm. you know, from enabling others. Mm. When I look back at all, you know, my professional achievements, uh, the things that kind of uh, stuck out in my mind mm. were not, you know, the uh, instances where I'd, you know, gone and received awards at, you know, big forums or uh, achieved top line growth or achieved profitability growth. Mm. It was more when, you know, somebody, you know, maybe not too high up in the hierarchy, mm. would just come and say, sir, you said this to me and it really helped me or, uh, you know, I was going through uh, mental health issues during the pandemic and you wrote something and it kind of uh, empowered me. Mm -hmm. So those are the sort of things which uh, ultimately, you know, give me joy. Mm. And that's when I kind of uh, started this dual track of uh, being a startup advisor as well as launching from the experts now. Mm. Both of which uh, do this in slightly different ways and have different purposes uh, but uh, they kind of converge to the same overall theme mm. of uh, you know just uh, getting joy and a sense of fulfillment and accomplishment mm. from uh, helping others wonderful so let's start uh, talk about startups rajiv um, let me start by asking you what is the kind of support you give to startups right so uh, it's a bit unconventional for the startup world but a bit more conventional when you compare it to traditional businesses. Mm. Uh, what I believe uh, fundamentally is that, you know, a startup, uh, despite everything that sets it uh, unique, is at the end of the day, a commercial uh, organization, mm. which has to run on commercial lines. And, uh, you know, the frenzy that we've seen over the past one or two years, which has, mm. of course, died down significantly mm. in the last three months or so, mm. uh, about, uh, you know, the funding and the craze for funding and, uh, the race for funding, uh, that is not real. That's not how you build businesses. That's mm -hmm. not how you build organizations. That's not even how you solve, you know, society level problems or, uh, you know, uh, innovate, mm -hmm. right? So my uh, essential, uh, you know, uh, pillar or what I stand for in the startup world or even the business world for that matter mm -hmm. is helping companies or organizations establish that uh, sort of fine balance mm -hmm. between what a startup is supposed to do in terms of disruption, innovation, etc., mm. uh, or solving large uh, scale problems mm. versus doing it on, you know, commercial, prudent, sustainable, scalable lines. Mm -hmm. So I try and kind of uh, bring the two together. And the most important thing which I focus on personally is uh, getting into the why of the promoter or the founder. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, if I cannot uh, understand the why behind, you know, what the promoter or founder is doing, mm -hmm. then it's a lost cause and then I typically do not engage. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can, you can figure that out pretty easily because, you know, in a matter of five minutes, if uh, they divert the conversation from what they are trying to do, the problem that they are trying to solve mm -hmm. into funding and, you know, other such things or valuation and stuff, mm -hmm. then you know that their why is only, you know, funding, valuation, mm -hmm. 
uh, enrichment, whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, I call it the the, the wrong three Ps. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, when you compare purpose, which is the right P in my uh, worldview, mm -hmm. versus other Ps, which are like you know, uh, passion, which is overrated, and I'll, I can talk about why, mm -hmm. uh, or uh, whether it is profits or whether it is publicity. You know, whatever it may mm -hmm. be. But ultimately, it has to be the central purpose, which has to be the pillar of what you're trying to do. And you can then build things around it. Mm -hmm. Once you know that alignment is in place, mm -hmm. then I also find it very easy to work with uh, such like-minded people. Mm -hmm. And as an individual, since I'm doing this more in my individual capacity, uh, I don't really have the problem or uh, requirement or need mm -hmm. to work with hundreds of people. I only need to work with, you know, a handful of clients or organizations hmm. because my bandwidth will not allow me to uh, meaningfully engage with people beyond right. that number. Right. And when uh, a startup founder comes to you, uh, they have already decided what they want to do. Right. What are the kind of uh, inputs that you give to them, which may ask them to pivot or change track or how does it work? So, you know, whereas they may believe that they have decided what they want to do, mm. uh, sometimes it is based on, you know, an overall narrative of, you know, what is uh, popular out there mm. or what maybe the VCs may be trying to push their way, mm -hmm. right? Because, you know, uh, the startup uh, ecosystem is driven by a very, very large extent to what, you know, the VCs and the uh, angel investors, etc., are uh, pushing the startup uh, ecosystem mm -hmm. to do. Mm -hmm. But that may not actually be the uh, problem that, let's say, a founder is trying to solve, mm -hmm. right? So uh, it is my belief that uh, not every organization needs to become a unicorn. Mm -hmm. Not every problem that is solved will result in a unicorn, mm -hmm. right? So it really depends on what they want to do, what is ultimately uh, their purpose, what will give them joy. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, you know, uh, all ancillary stakeholders who are involved in a startup, whether it is, say, an angel investor or a VC or even, you know, somebody like me, mm. we will benefit much more, obviously, mm. from nudging a startup founder mm. towards creating a unicorn versus, say, you know, solving a problem which may not be a unicorn or a you know scalable mm. problem mm. to solve. Mm. But uh, I don't take that route because, you know, it's not uh, that I'm chasing uh, 10 unicorns in my portfolio of 10 companies, okay. right? Interesting. And based on all the experience that you have of having worked with so many startup founders, what in your opinion are some of the basic mistakes a lot of them make? So uh, I would imagine the, you know, the fundamental mistake, uh, two or three of them I would uh, mm. probably call out because there are too many, honestly, I mean, we could go on for days around mistakes of startups and uh, their founders. But uh, just calling out the more important ones. Mm -hmm. The first one I've already alluded to is, you know, a cognitive fault, mm -hmm. which is a mistaken thinking. It is not particular to startup founders, but I think it is rampant across uh, the world right now. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and I kind of would borrow from what Daniel Kahneman, Kahneman uh, spoke about, you know, fast thinking versus slow thinking. Mm -hmm. And uh, in a nutshell, what it means is, that uh, startup founders are guilty of fast thinking. Mm -hmm. Fast thinking means our automatic way of thinking, the way we are wired. Mm -hmm. And that wiring essentially comes from all the narrative mm -hmm. that is around us. So what others are doing, what is popular in the media, what you know, the media is promoting, mm -hmm. what you know, society seems to be celebrating. Mm -hmm. So instead of doing that, slow thinking essentially means actually using our uh, you know, cog uh, cognitive faculties mm -hmm. to really think uh, deeply and hard about what you want to do take a step back, you know, do some introspection. So that is not typically the auto mode of uh, how we live our lives. Mm -hmm. So I essentially, you know, one of the big things I help uh, startups do is really get into the slow thinking mode versus the fast thinking mode. Mm -hmm. And that is also one of the biggest, you know, mistakes that people make. Mm -hmm. uh, the other big mistake, you know, more from a, you know, nuts and bolts standpoint is really not uh, having a team which kind of covers uh, all the elements. Mm -hmm. Because a, you know, a startup is just like any other organization. It needs uh, all functional abilities. It needs all skill sets. Mm -hmm. And typically, one person does not have it all. Mm -hmm. So a techie may not be good at you know, sales and marketing. A person who has both these may not be good at you know, finance. And you know, it, uh, somebody may not have the people skills. It goes on mm -hmm. and on. So I think uh, getting the right mix of experience at a low cost uh, and at you know in the right sort of model 
without necessarily taking funding and splurging on getting 10 heads of departments. Mm. I think that is the kind of balance uh, which a startup needs. And if they don't have that, mm. they typically will find uh, fault lines somewhere along the way. Mm. And the biggest and the most common uh, mistake is obviously not finding the right product market fit and not having the right you know, GTM strategy, etc. Et mm. I mean, those are all uh, very, very much spoken about. Fascinating. And uh, the other question that is often asked is that should a founder uh, go solo or should they have a, a co-founder? Yeah, so that I think depends, uh, of course, on a situation to situation basis. But as I said, uh, you need multiple skill sets. And if you don't have it in you, uh, I don't think uh, there, honestly there is uh, any benefit long term mm -hmm. in uh, you know being mature about it or saying that you know I will solve uh, the whole world's problems on my own and I will run the organization on my own. Mm -hmm. uh, whether it is through co-founders or whether it is through you know, partners, collaborations, mm -hmm. uh, outsourcing, whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. So I'm using that, you know, uh, co-founders in a broader sense. Mm -hmm. uh, but you definitely need to have access to these uh, capabilities, whether you do it through a co-founder or whether mm -hmm. you do it through, you know, strategic partnerships, collaboration. I mean, there right. are various ways. And that's, again, you know, some of the things I help uh, people with, because mm. it's not just uh, a binary uh, question of go solo versus have a co-founder. There are so many other ways in which you can have uh, mm. access to that experience set, skill set, and, uh, you know, benefit from that. Mm. Interesting. The other question, Rajiv, that is asked by a lot of people is on funding. Should, right. a, co should a founder bootstrap as long as possible? Or should they raise money as soon as it's available? Right. So very interesting question. And I'm sure, you know, this is a quandary that is uh, central to a lot of uh, startup founders. Mm -hmm. So there is no right or wrong way about it. Mm -hmm. I think fundamentally, the word startup has become so commoditized and generalized mm -hmm. that uh, people have lost kind of its true meaning or sense along the way. Mm -hmm. So it really depends on what your business model is. Mm -hmm. So if you're trying to build a product which requires a lot of investment, then, uh, you know, definitely there's no point creating something half big, mm -hmm. which will just not fly with, uh, you know, the target audience that you're uh, targeting. Right. Um, in, in those cases, definitely it, it is worthwhile to have access to uh, resources and capital mm -hmm. to create that product. And, mm -hmm. you know, when I say that, I'm drawing a distinction between uh, just having funds to build that, uh, you know, product mm -hmm. versus having access to those resources. So mm -hmm. again, you could, you know, uh, end up in a partnership with people who have those skills and who are willing to put a little bit of, uh, you know, skin in the game, etc. Mm -hmm. So there's a, there are creative ways in which you can do this. Mm -hmm. uh, so that is just uh, one of the uh, models. The mm -hmm. other model is, you know, the typical uh, consumer acquisition model. And mm -hmm. a lot of startups have made this mistake. They just spend, you know, uh, all the money in the world, all the capital available in the world. Mm -hmm. And they keep running after it only and only to acquire customers. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if the product market fit is not there, if you do not have a differentiator, if you do not have a mood, you know, if there is no customer loyalty, mm -hmm. end of the day, you can only get temporary success and by success of course it doesn't mean the real success mm. in terms of uh, you know a long-term sustainable scalable business mm. but it only means success in terms of very myopic metrics mm. which is you know the number of hits you are getting or the number of transactions that you're enabling which tomorrow will go to somebody else who right. may be willing to splurge more right so we've seen this in the business cycle you know n number of times mm. but you know this is what i say about fast versus slow thinking the fast thinking inhibits you from learning these lessons. Whereas the mm -hmm. slow thinking helps you kind of absorb what is really going on in the broader ecosystem mm -hmm. and uh, take wiser decisions. Very interesting. Uh, my next so question. There has, uh, yeah, sorry. To go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, there, have been, uh, there have been many, many instances mm -hmm. where, uh, you know, startup uh, founders have built very large organizations mm -hmm. uh, without any access to external funding. Mm -hmm. I mean, the big poster boys obviously are like the Zoho, Zero Das, uh, recently the latent views of the world. Mm -hmm. And uh, they've built extremely large, successful organizations with world-class products. Uh, mm -hmm. And they've done it without access to funding. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you look at, you know, the way the founders think, it is distinctly different from, let's say, the way the founders think of 
uh, other poster boy unique ones for example mm-hmm. and if you just uh, see the interviews of the founders of these three organizations that i mentioned mm-hmm. versus uh, you know pick any three unique ones of your choice mm-hmm. you will see the difference correct 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 the next question rajiv that is often debated is uh, given the size of our country when should a startup start to scale up right. i'd love to get your thought on that yeah so uh, this is again one of the biggest uh, thinking fallacies right you know you look at the size of the pie and think it's a very big pie so you know if we pour money into it even if we get you know 0.1% mm. of the market share mm. we'll become so big Correct. i mean uh, these are uh, business models which are purely uh, and you know solely pivoted in excel mm. a pivot of course being a pun intended Correct. right Correct. Uh, but uh, they have no import in the real world mm. so actually the you know the fulcrum on which you should decide whether to scale up or whether you should go all out or you know take uh, the next level of funding mm-hmm. and uh, go all out on uh, customer acquisition and scaling up mm-hmm. is really how much is uh, your product market fit mm-hmm. how you know uh, what is the need of the you know customer segment mm-hmm. that you are able to solve is it actually solving a big problem Yeah. or is it just because of your uh, you know splurging or marketing uh, or uh, you know just some schemes that you've launched hmm. you have been able to attract uh, people's attention temporarily hmm. because you know one thing we need to fundamentally understand in today's world we are living in an extremely distracted world hmm. people are not i mean this is not just to our startup founders it is to our consumers also hmm. so they are also not using you know their entire cognitive faculties to Uh, take proper decisions mm. so there are times when they are swayed by you know the next google ad that pops up or you know <laughs> the next uh, thing they see in their instagram feed or you know what not mm. so uh, you can buy their attention temporarily mm-hmm. you can influence their decisions uh, temporarily mm. but uh, you know that is not sustainable and at some point in time it will fall through because they will lose interest mm. so uh, you know when the question comes of when you should really really push the button on scaling up mm. and push the pedal there uh, then these are not honestly the questions that one should be looking at uh, answers mm. the real question is is it solving a permanent problem mm. uh, is my solution better than the others is it going to remain better than the others mm. and you know if there are people who kind of uh, copy what i'm doing which happens obviously all the time particularly mm. in the startup world uh, then what is going to be my strategy how am i going to be able to defend it if at all right Very interesting okay so yeah so it's again a, a slight paradigm shift from mm. the way people normally think of mm. approaching the startup uh, you know scaling up and expansion so mm. i would say focus less on uh, just these uh, you know metrics which give you a false sense of you know security false mm. sense of achievement and really focus on uh, the core of what is it that you're doing for your customer or target mm. segment mm. fascinating uh next question is about the expert's mouth tell me a little bit about what you do here right so uh, as i was mentioning you know during the pandemic that is really when we uh, start thinking a lot and uh, there is a little bit of a back story to this as well mm-hmm. in fact uh, when the pandemic was uh, announced when the lockdown was announced rather in march of 2020 Uh, mm-hmm. the first thing that you know me and my wife kind of started discussing was that uh, this is going to be a mental health for people mm-hmm. because they are not going to be used to be you know locked down and right. this is not going to go away in a hurry because uh, it was quite apparent that this is going to be big uh, by you know being big we probably thought 6 months we never thought it's going to go on for 2 years and you know still counting Mm. uh but even 6 months would have been a very very long time mm. and we thought you know people are going to go through uh, uh you know mental health issues mental mm. health was not of course the term in fashion that time but mm. uh, you know the equivalent of that uh and so on and so forth so uh, uh, i take a lot of pleasure in writing articles mm. and stuff that's what i have been doing mm. i had been doing until then so i took that opportunity of the first uh, 10 odd days in the month of march 2020 as soon as the lockdown was announced to kind of expand one of my articles into a little bit you know mini book mm-hmm. which was launched on uh, you know amazon so that received a lot of positive feedback and you know the kind that i was mentioning to you which really gives you joy that you've been able to actually help somebody from uh, avoiding you know getting into depression or 
Mm. Uh, you know, making good use of the time instead of being bogged down by mm. all the negativity. Mm. So uh, that kind of uh, that seed of a thought expanded over the months, mm. and then by around Diwali 2020, uh, my wife and me launched this uh, uh, website from the expert's mouth. Mm-hmm. And the whole idea was that uh, it is a crowdsourced content publishing platform, mm-hmm. which helps us change the content narrative. And you know, by content narrative, what I mean is. If you look at what the, is the content that people are consuming today, mm-hmm. it is essentially coming either from mainstream media or websites or whatever, mm-hmm. plus social media, mm-hmm. and both of these are laced by one of the three, which is either negativity mm-hmm. or you know sensationalism, you know of some sort or the other, uh, or it is based by you know self promotion, self advertising uh, sort of feeds that you see on social media, mm-hmm. or the third thing is uh, that people do is typically. they would do anything to hack the algorithm so that they are one step ahead of you know google or youtube or you know facebook algos or whatever right, right? so uh, essentially content generation is predicated on one of these three pillars mm-hmm. and uh, you know what the sort of thought is that uh, in difficult times or even in good times for that matter what one really needs to learn from is you know the experience of others but where is that platform that people can share their experiences so if you look at the olden times mm. the elders essentially when they would speak to you know the young ones they would encourage them they would share their experiences and even though it was not a formal education or training session there is so much that we implicitly learned from that and mm. it has become ingrained in us mm. right so even if i look at you know my childhood times the uh, stories of what my maternal grandfather did what my paternal grandfather did and you know that kind of stuff yeah uh, that uh, really helped shape who i am how i think etc mm. so we thought okay let's create this platform which changes the content narrative it helps everybody to come in and share their experiences so you kind of gain by doing that as an individual it helps right. you grow it helps you express yourself better and on the other hand uh, it helps people learn from your experiences mm. and uh, they also benefit from it so that is how we started on and our vision right from the very beginning has been that we kind of stand on four pillars mm. the first one is content you know which i've just described and the second one is kind of uh, productize that content and create courses around it so that it becomes more targeted mm. the content is of course more generic and it also goes uh, against what marketers tell you that it should be in a niche so we don't have a niche we are kind of uh, all over because we believe that people are multidimensional by nature mm. and we don't want to become another youtube or google or bolt from which forces people to uh, just consume feed related mm. to only one eye, one area or one dimension mm. so yeah that's how interesting we kind of progress very very interesting raj you have time for one more question and this is for the many people who will listen to our conversation what would your advice be to a young entrepreneur who is starting off on her or his journey right so uh, yeah something that i've already mentioned you know which is what is my basic screening yeah. filter when uh, engage with startups mm-hmm. i think ask the question why engage in a little bit of you know the uh, slow thinking versus the fast thinking mm-hmm. uh, uh, think deeply about why you know not what you want to do but why is it that you want to do something mm-hmm. and uh, you know last but not the least Uh, definitely do something that you enjoy mm. and which is uh, also solving a problem for people because if it is at the cusp of these two yeah. then you can really build a business if it yeah. is only your you know passion or something that you enjoy doing but which is not really solving a problem mm. then you know it is not a startup it is a hobby you know it is a you know passion pursuit or whatever mm. but it, it don't really classify it as a business i'm not saying don't do it but then de- don't devote all your energy time resources and dedicate your professional life to it mm. keep it on the side do it on the weekends do it you know morning evening mm. whatever mm. but uh, you know for a business to flourish ultimately uh, you are not the center the customer is the center well and said. his or her problems need to be solved well said well said rajiv on that note uh, and your three wonderful pieces of advice which is ask why think about the slow thinking and fast thinking uh, process and do what you enjoy um and that's some and that's uh, also solves the problem thank you so much for speaking to me thank you for talking to me about startups and your amazing journey thank you again and good luck uh, thanks ashutosh my pleasure being on the show and uh, all the best uh, for your show i think it's uh, doing an absolutely fabulous job by again you know helping people share their experiences 
and help so many people around the world learn from the shared experiences of uh, all the wonderful guests on your platform thank you so much thank you for listening to the brand called you video cast and podcast a platform that brings you knowledge experience and wisdom of hundreds of successful individuals from around the world do visit our website www.tbcy.in to watch and listen to the stories of many more individuals you can also follow us on youtube facebook instagram and twitter just search for the brand called you